City, you cannot go two feet without seeing a poster for or hearing someone talking about Kinky Boots. The multi-Tony Award-winning musical now celebrating five years on Broadway. Over the years, the show has taken home several awards, including six Tony Awards, like Best Musical. And later, we're going to be getting a special performance right here. But, but first, help me welcome, please, the incredible team behind the production who you know well. Tony, Emmy, and Grammy winner, Cindy Lauper. And the talented four-time Tony Award winning, Harvey Firestein. Thank you for being here. <laughs> she is. Welcome. It is so exciting to have you here. Oh, thank you. Can I tell you, I had no idea that you guys put this together. I, of course, had heard of Kinky Boots, but this team is something to be reckoned with. Can I ask how the partnership began on this project? Tell them. <laughs> it's because we both have such lovely voices. Yeah. You know, I was washing the dishes after dinner, and we were in, living in Connecticut at that time, and... Um, Harvey called me up. I had just done one of those tours in, in Europe, a <coughs> double-decker bus. And, you know, because you're the star, you're in the back, which means on a double-decker bus, you're in the washer-dryer cycle. You know? <laughs> and so, you know, he called me, and I said, I'm not doing one of those again. And he said, you want to write for me? I said, absolutely. And he said, well, you better see the movie first. And the shoes alone. Because it's know. based on a true story that that's became nice. a movie before yes. it was yes. a play. Yes. You did the book, which means the words, the, right? Jerry, the, yes. The words. Yeah, the Jerry, Mitch, Jerry Mitchell, uh, who directed and choreographed it, he called me and said, you want to do this? Mm -hmm. And I said, yeah. And then I called Cindy. And then the three of us became this sort of three-headed monster. It's very funny. I mean, it'll have you laughing. There are some tender moments as well. But for people who don't know about it, what is it about? Can you describe it in a couple of lines. It's really about, it's really about, you know, you grow up and you have your parents, e e e e e their voices in the back of your head saying, you should have turned out to be this, you should have, but you have to live your life. And at some point in your life, you have to come to terms with, I'm an adult. This is who I turned out to be. Mm -hmm. My parents have to sort of, I have to forgive myself for not being what my parents wanted me to be. Mm -hmm. These then, two young way. boys who grow into men and their relationships with their dads. Right. And because one is, one is a, a shoe factory. They manufacture shoes and he doesn't want to make shoes. Yeah. And the other guy. Boring father, shoes. Boring shoes. Boring shoes. <laughs> and the other guy, <laughs> yes. his father's a boxer and he wants to make him a boxer. But what he doesn't realize is his father wants him to learn to box because he realizes he's a transvestite and he might need to take care of himself. Mm -hmm. And it's out of love, actually. It's incredible. Um, so it's you, a beautiful story. Were you at beautiful, all, like, right? how hard was that process for you writing this as opposed to writing just regular songs that you would release on an LP? Well, because I didn't know anything, I took the job. And I, these are my friends. <laughs> and I wanted to work with friends. And, and sometimes you work with friends and it's a big nightmare. This was very, it was a precious time for me. And, uh, you know, I used to feel like Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz because I was being walked through by the lion, the scarecrow, and the tin man. <laughs> and, um, yeah, well, what right? What do I actually call you? <laughs> what do you call her? <laughs> I call, I call, uh, she, I'm Mommy Dearest, and, and this is, you know, I, like, I call her up, that's, Christina. That's not good. No, it's not. Christina, <laughs> did you finish that song yet? I'm getting to it, Mommy Dearest. I'm getting to it. <laughs> Christina. I wonder, because it's, you know, seeing it in 2018 America, where I feel like we've, we've made some progress when it comes to LGBT rights, and in particular, transgender rights. Um, we're not there yet, but we've made progress. But how to, have you noticed any change in how it's received and how it makes people feel and the feedback you get from when it first launched just five years ago? I, you know, the audiences, what's so wonderful about theater, it's not like television, it's not like yeah. movies. Audiences walk in, you go to a, see a movie, and, they, and, and, and up on the screen you see a picture of Venice and people walking in Venice, and then a thing comes up and says, Venice, and you go, okay, I'm in Venice, I guess. But in the theater... A person just walks into a bare stage and says, isn't it a beautiful day in Venice? And the whole audience goes, it's a beautiful day in Venice. And that's yeah. the way it is. The audience comes in and what you give them, they want and they, mm -hmm. 
they take it with love and, and humor. And Kinky Boots is so special what it does to the audience. Well, you know, you've seen it. Yes. And, and one of your producers has seen it twice. That audience leaves that theater. We call it the factory of joy. Can I just say, um, in Chicago, Seoul, Toronto, London, Australia, Tokyo, Manila, Poland, two U.S. tours and a U.K. tour. Um, and so obviously this is a play, this is a show that has resonated with a lot of people. You're going to see it for yourself. But before, before so we have the performance, we have more with these to these Broadway legends when we come back after the Legend break. Don't go right. yeah. And we're back now with Cindy Lauper, whose debut album, She's So Unusual, which featured that hit, Girls Just Want to Have Fun, came out, get this, 35 years ago. Yeah. And Harvey Firestein, who has written and played so many award winning characters, including the fabulous Edna in Hairspray Live, right here on NBC. Uh, can I just ask you, so what is it like for you to hear, to see that video and hear that song? Well, I wanted to make, like, as we started to do this, I, you know, you don't have money at first at all. And we were kind of like the little engine that could. So we got, I got all my friends, my mother's in the video, my brother's in the video. <laughs> my dog is in the video. And um, all our friends, and I took out all my sunglasses and everything, and we all took our stuff out, and we all dressed each other, and... We just went. And, you know, when I see it, I'm really, it's like a little family album because mm -hmm. I remember all my friends, you know, Dan Neer, his wife, he was a DJ I used to know. and It had Girls Just Want to Have Fun, Time After Time, She Bop, which is Time After Time is my favorite. It's amazing. Um, of course, my children now know you through True Colors, which, is re, uh, which was released on Trolls. Right. Justin Timberlake did a remix of it. Right. I have to ask you about True Colors because that, that's more to you than just a song. Um, you've used that in, as, as the name of, of a fund that now is celebrating its 10-year anniversary in yes. helping homeless and LGBT. struggling LGBT people. LGBT uh, kids or youth who are experiencing homeless right now, homelessness right now, um, they are up to 40% of the homeless youth population in the United States. And um, it's a fixable problem because they're only homeless because they are LGBTQ. Mm -hmm. And through education and outreach and bringing, we collaborate with everybody and we bring organizations together and people together. And I'm very proud we're going to have our I know summit you... in Atlanta, Georgia. So go online and come see it. We're going to learn how to roll up our sleeves and sit across and talk to people who don't agree with us. So if you listen, maybe they listen. The whole know? country could use a little bit of that. Yeah. We'll post that for you, by the way, at today.com slash Megan Today, just so if you want that information. But speaking of rolling up your sleeves and working, not only have you, I mean, you've been doing everything, you are the most prolific man on Broadway. Come on. I, I, you've written, you've written for Kinky Boots, La Cage Off All, Newsies, the list goes on and on and on, not to mention your starring roles in these huge hits like Mrs. Doubtfire, one of my favorites, right? Where do you do your best writing and how do you compare your career as a writing to that as an actor? I, 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 I couldn't imagine just doing one thing. I, um, you know, I, actually, my degree is in painting, and, um, and, I, and I'm a licensed, and I'm a licensed <laughs> I teacher. I think we even surprised Cindy with that one. And I'm a licensed teacher. So, um, yeah, I was a, a, a um, art therapist. Wow. So, but I can't imagine just doing one thing. So, so I love writing. I love acting. Because writing, you're all alone all the time. You're locked in there. You're digging. And then acting, it's like somebody else's words. You get to be somebody else. I get to leave the house. And then, you know, <laughs> and then, and then working in collaboration, especially on a musical, yeah. you get to work with geniuses. You know, you get to work with people like this. All right, now, nah, but... <laughs> Others. Maybe someday I mean, it'll happen for I've you. I've written with Jerry Herman, you know, that we wrote La Casa Full together and, and Alan Menken. And, you know, I mean, I, I, it's just, it's, you know, it's, it's like open the door and do something new every day. That's the fun thing. Where are you going to do lovely. Ursula? Are you going to do Ursula? I'm seeing Ursula at Carnegie Hall oh. for an Alan Menken tribute to uh, New, York, uh, New York Pops Orchestra, and I'm seeing Ursula. Come wow. on. And George and my show George. Oh, that's amazing. And Cindy, right now, just in case you want to get more of her compositions, she is actually working right now on 
Working Girl, which is coming to Broadway. Yeah, the, the, Oh, it's so long past due, and I can't wait to see it. You guys, thank you both so oh, much. Thank, thank you for this amazing production. And wait well. till you enjoy our kids. I know. It's the bomb. Our guys, okay. yeah, but you got Wayne you Brady. You got I know. I, he's Come on, Wayne. Incredible. I know, in his inaugural week. We're excited about that. You could never tell it was his inaugural week. I miss Pantatonics herself. Are you going to stay and watch that? Today? Of course. We're going to we'll make an extra pressure on the on the, the cast. Hello, Today fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there. And click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.